So the next way, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be what we call the intercept method. Some of you, some of you might have issues with um, always rewriting in slope intercept form, or maybe like you just want to check your answer. So there's another way, and I'll give you guys my tip. I like using the intercept method to graph when my c, my constant c, is divisible by my coefficients a and b. So let's see again what divisible means. Does 3 evenly divide into 24? No. Yes. Yes. Does negative 4 <laughs> evenly divide into 24? Yes. yes. So this would be a good example to use intercept form rather than rewriting it into slope intercept form. And let me kind of go through this again on what exactly intercept form is going to help us do. So when you guys graph, we have a y-axis and an x-axis. Now, one of the main things that we need to make sure we understand about this is what exactly are the x and the y-axis. All the x and the y-axis are are number lines, right? Just forget about the y-axis for a second. That 0, 1, 2, 3. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. It's just a number line. And then to produce the y-axis, that is just going to be a vertical number line. Where here is 0, 1, 2, 3. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Does everybody understand that? Yes. All right. Um, now, what I want to <clears throat> understand with you is we previously always talked about the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where the graph crosses on the y-axis. So if you were to put a point on the y-axis, have I gone left or right on the x-axis? When there is a point on the y-axis, have I gone left or right on the x-axis? No. So therefore, this point has an x value of 0. So at the y-intercept, x equals 0. Now let's look at the x-intercept. If I have a point on the x-intercept, have I gone up or down on that y-axis? No. So you can say at the x-intercept, y equals 0. And that information is very important because, again, ladies and gentlemen, we only need two points to create a line. So if I can identify the x and the y-axis, I have my two points. I don't need to worry about rewriting it in slope-intercept form, plotting the y-intercept, and using the slope. I can just find the x and the y-intercept. So if x equals 0, I can solve for y. So you just plug 0 in for x. And here, I put 0 in for y. Now, any number multiplied by 0 is going to go to 0. And now you can solve. So now, I go ahead and solve. Divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. y equals negative 6. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. x equals 8. <clears throat> So now I can just plot these two points, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. x equals 8, y equals 0, right here. y equals negative 6, x equals 0, right here. Is that the same thing that we had in the last problem? Down 6, up 3 over 4, yes. right? Up 3 over 4. Up 3, or I guess it should be over there. Up 3 over 4. Up 3 over 4. It's the same as the last problem. 